I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. Matthew chapter 13, verse 24. And the final word, similar to these, and I'm reading from the New International Version. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed the seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among them. The wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. All right. The owner's servant came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servant asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you were pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time, I will tell the harvester, First, collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my bone. All right. Amen. Amen. I want to talk just for a few, for a few moments. Just let the wheat and the tares grow together. Amen. That's what I want to talk about. Just, just let them grow. Just let them, just let them do what they're doing right now. And uh, after a while, there will be a separation. Amen. 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 For the grass will the the flowers thereof fade away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. We see here some important golden nuggets that I want to raise in our hearing this morning, this afternoon that there is an importance for us to know, amen, even in the body of Christ, even in what we call Christendom and the church at large, it is important for us to know that just as well as there are uh, what we would deem good people or good Christians or good church people, uh, well, I like to say no such thing as a good church person, but if you're a Christian, then you you have the propensity to be a man, at least Christ-like, which is a a good upstanding with moral with morals and values, and and uh, to a degree you have a, uh, a an urgency for righteousness and wanting to live upright. All right, Amen. But at the same time, church people are different people. They are uh, they appear to. <clears throat> look like a man Christians. They appear to uh, know the lingo and the jargon and have to a degree a form of godliness, a man, but at the same time a form of godliness is not true godliness. Mm -hmm. And so they, a man, appear to be one way, but the truth of the matter is they are far from what they appear to be. Right. And because of that, amen, sometimes as the leadership, we, we want to, amen, to deal with certain things in certain areas in the way of how we teach and how we uh, try to maneuver in the church. And the truth be told, every pastor has a few members that they would love, amen, to uh, put out the church. Amen. amen. There's a few of them in there, amen, that, that, that live so raggedy and keep up so much stuff in church that we would love, amen, to, 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 to separate them 
from the rest of the group. Right. Amen. But the truth of the matter is that, amen, we, 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 although we can do that, but we run the risk, amen, of damaging, amen, the growth, amen, of uh, the, the whole harvest. Why? Because you have no idea who people are connected to. That's right. And, 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 and while you, amen, while you got a hard head deacon or a, a wayward missionary or, amen, a crazy a church goer, amen, and some of them, they come in, you can see them with all of their demons. You can come see on. them, how they operate in the, in the church Amen. And it does not feel good to you at all. And it does bring down the, mora the overall spiritual morale of the church. Right. Amen. And yet, amen, sometimes that's why we have to get here early. Right. Amen. So we can pray and contemplate the building. Yeah. Amen. Just so that we can get, amen, have some sense of, amen, putting a guard, if you will, amen, in place, that way when the enemy walks through the door and tries to sit down in here and sit on, the, amen, the praise and the worship, amen, and keep people from getting from God what they need because they sit there and they are distractions, amen, and we want to rob, sometimes we want to, amen, we want to uh, 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 try to tell people, we want to excuse them sometimes, but if you excuse them, amen, you don't know who going to get up and walk out with them. Amen, because I learned, amen, that no matter how wrong an individual is, somebody going to stand with them. Just use for an example, yeah. amen, that, that, that of all of the wrong that, that we can see that he did, there are still some people that rock and roll it with Donald Trump right to this day. Amen. And so it is, amen, even in the church world. I don't care, amen, the, the pastor, amen, could have taken all of the money except for 50 cents out of the account. He could have, amen, fathered three, four babies in the church. There's somebody that's still going to love him and be willing to rock with him if he goes to start a church across the street. That's somebody going to go with him. That's true. Amen. And that lets us know, amen, that people have connections with people, amen, even in their wrong. But Jesus gives us this parable, amen, about the kingdom of heaven. He says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sold good seed in his field, but while everyone was asleep, you got to know one thing, that no matter how much good you do for all of the good that you plant, the enemy is coming, amen, to not uproot what you did, but he's trying to plant over what you did. That's right. Y'all ain't helping me. Amen. I'm talking about me now. I ain't talking about y'all. Amen. Amen. Don't get quiet now. I'm talking about me. 
because I know where he brought me from. I know where he has delivered me from. I know, amen, the things that I used to do, amen, that I no longer have a desire to do. Amen. And, and so Jesus, he says, but while everyone was sleeping, the enemy came. His enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. That's what the devil does. He'll come in and sow all of this bad stuff and then he'll leave. And then he's sitting there watching it start growing. Come on, come on. Yeah, he wants to, to see the damage that it's going to cause. Come on. Amen. It, that's why people that come in and they'll plant a seed of discord, amen, through the power of suggestion, amen, and if you don't know a person, that's what a lot of people have done to me in Brock College Station since I've been back in these last six or seven months, amen, it's folk that don't know me, it's some that know me but don't know, haven't been around me in 20, 30 years, amen, and folk that are think that are the, so supposed to be the voice of the town, speaking up like they know me and don't really know me, amen, I, I'm going to pray that God visit them in their sleep. Yeah. Amen. Help me Amen. Amen. And uh, because, because, because one thing I do know is this right here. When God has a, an assignment and a mandate on our life, yes. you can't let no devil in hell stop you yes. from doing what God has placed on your life. Amen. Amen. And it's, it, it is, it is, amen, it has a 
multi-purpose, multi-faceted. These are also used in medicine. Y'all ain't hooking me up in here now. And, 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 and things, it has a it has a purpose, amen, that is almost endless, amen. And at the same time, God is giving to the earth realm or to the spirit world, amen, something that can be used, amen, that can be, uh, uh, that can help many of millions upon billions of people. And then at the same time, the enemy is planting something in there, amen, to, uh, amen, to be disguised as something that is, that we can use, but it's useless. Amen. It's useless. That, it, it, there's, a, there's a point of us being, being useful and useless. Uh, so this parable of the wheat and weeds emphasizes that Satan will sow along those who sow the word of God. The field represents the world. And the good seed represents the true sons of the kingdom. Firstly, the gospel and true believers will be planted throughout the world. Satan also will plant his followers, the sons of evil, the evil one, among God's people to counteract God's truth. And I believe that because, amen, the enemy infiltrates in every church. Come on. He strategically places people within every church to, to bring distraction, discord. And all types of things that, that, that that's happening. And again, they come in and they look like us. Yeah. They know the hymns. They know the scripture. Amen. Mm -hmm. they, they, they know how to they know how to flow, but they don't flow with the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. But they know how to flow. Amen. They know how to they know how to get in here and do what we do. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. They didn't practice it, rehearsed it, choreographed it. Amen. It looks like it's authentic, but it's really not. All right. Amen. And so we have to be careful, amen, with what is seen, amen, versus what is what it really is. And secondly, the principal work of Satan uh, emissaries uh, within the visible kingdom of heaven will be uh, undermining the authority of God's word and promoting unrighteousness and false doctrine. Uh -huh. right. Christ later spoke of a great deception among his people because of the professed Christians who are really false teachers. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, on, the great, uh, on the great tribulation in Zeus 30, the condition of Satan's people existing among God, people will terminate with God's final destruction of all the wicked at the end of the age. And I like how I like how Jesus gives this parable. He said, because when the owner came in verse 27, the owner of servants that came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Uh -huh. Where did the weeds come from? Jesus points out clearly, plainly, the enemy did this. We got to know that when stuff goes awry in the worship experience or in the way of the kingdom, uh -huh. that we identify for what it is. Yeah. The enemy does it. Amen. Amen. And not only does he does it, but look, he does it, but he says, he, the enemy did this, he replied, and the servant asked, well, do you want us to go and pull him up? And he says, no. He answered, because why are you pulling up weeds? You may root up the wheat with them. So Jesus said, let them both grow together until harvest. In other words, let them, be, let them reach their full potential. Yes, sir. Let them, don't, don't bother them. Don't, don't go out there with the lawnmower and cut everything down. Don't, don't go out there and trim the hedges. Don't, don't, don't even do no pruning. Don't just, just let them grow. Amen. And then Jesus said, uh, and at the time, I will tell the harvesters. Check this out now. Uh -huh. just, not just know anybody. See, anybody don't know how to harvest. Come on. Amen. Because if you're har a harvester should know, firstly, what he or she is 
harvest. Amen. That's it. And so Jesus said, I will let the harvesters know, uh -huh. amen, to take down the weeds first. Yeah. Listen to what he said. So, 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 so the enemy comes in last, uh -huh. but he going to get uprooted first. God, God. He okay. comes in last. He comes in first. And he comes in and he when the, when the week was done first, the enemy comes in and try to take over. Uh -huh. And then and then he thinks that he's gonna have the last laugh about it. Amen. But he's gonna get taken up first. Amen. Right. And the scripture says that he said, put them in a bomb okay. so that they can go and be burned. Y'all yeah. ain't happening. Because 
the Lord.
some of you religious leaders don't understand the strange power that I walk in. I'm talking to you again, but I know y'all secretly watch this up here. You won't fast, you'll call for fast, but you don't fast. You ain't lost an ounce in 45 years. Thanks, God.